uh, a, a very longtime friend of the Armenian people, Senator Chuck Schumer from the state of New York. For the past two and a half years, two and a half decades, Chuck Schumer has been a leader. I'll let you take your applause. He doesn't want me to introduce him, but I'm going to do it anyway. New York's senior senator and a native of Brooklyn, Chuck Schumer is a member Well, thank you very much, Dr. Papazian, and it is great to be here once again to remember history, to light a candle for truth and justice. So I say to all of you, Hadev. Ketse Hayastan. Now to Dr. Papazian, to many of my distinguished colleagues on the podium, to your eminences and fellow clergy, and of course to all of you. A little rain isn't going to stop us from lighting a giant candle of truth, is it? That's why this room is so full. And let me say, the scriptures speak about speaking truth to power, and that's what we are doing today. We have great respect and admiration for the survivors who grace our presence here. They are living reminders of what so many people went through between 1915 and 1921. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, truth always prevails. We say to the Turkish government, truth always prevails. For centuries, for centuries, there are those who have tried to sweep truth under the rug. But truth always prevails. And we know what happened to the more than a million Armenians who died. Not by accident, not because of a simple lack of food, but because, as history shows us, a plan by the Ottoman Turkish government to kill them. And you can kill people by bullets, and you can kill people by gas, and you can kill people by depriving them of food. But when it is a concerted plan to do it, it is genocide and nothing less. And we must call it that. And remember it is that. I was one of 15 senators who sent a letter just recently to our president. And in the letter, led by Senator Boxer, the letter said that President Obama should define the incidents in the Ottoman Empire between 1915 and 1921 as genocide. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would say to the Turkish government and to the Turkish people, it is time to give up on your campaign to sweep truth under the rug. It will be better for you better for United States American uh, United States relationships and better of course for the Armenian people if you give up this the, if you give up this campaign to deny the truth once and for all it makes no sense to do it that way we can we can never bring back those who died we can never erase the memories of those who were lost and the horror of what happened. I know how you feel. When I read articles in college newspapers written by those who deny Hitler's Holocaust, it is like a dagger through my heart. And when the Turkish government denies the Armenian Holocaust, it is a dagger through your hearts 
and the hearts of the whole world of truth-loving people. It cannot and should not go on. And so again, I would say to the Turkish government, give up on your losing battle to deny the truth about the Armenian Holocaust. That's what we say to them. We say it, hopefully, in the best of spirit and not with anger, but we know this. We know this. When you deny that evil has occurred, it paves the way for evil to occur again. When you deny that a Holocaust has occurred, it paves the way for a Holocaust against another people to occur. We in America pride ourselves on being the moral light of the world. In our beautiful New York Harbor stands, I can see it from my window in Brooklyn, the Statue of Liberty, that lovely lady holding up the torch. So America has a special obligation to come out strongly, for squarely, and without hesitation, and label the historical events of 1915 to 1920 for what they were, genocide. And I will do everything in my power to see that that happens in Washington, and we will not let that candle go out. I promise you that for generation from generation to generation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing up for the truth. Thank you for standing up for your people. Stetsutun Ketse Hayasan.